going on? Uh, Rob here to do a video for uh, the best CDs of 2019. Um, I don't buy a lot of CDs. The only reason I buy CDs is that's the only way that the format comes from that band. So that's why I'm going to do a CD and that's why I'm going to do a vinyl because I don't, I don't want to do them together. It's kind of not the... You, know, you can't have it on vinyl, what's the point? <laughs> so you got to do CDs. So I'm going to do a top 10 CD with a bunch of uh, um, what it could is. Can I get a word? So I'm going to go with that. Um, as you can see, uh, finally getting this kind of cleaned out in here. It sounds a little hollow probably because everything is out of here now. Um, it, it's a very big area. Um, but I've been cleaning that out and trying to get shit situated now. So now I'm, I'm actually starting to put stuff together. Uh, I, need, I really need to paint this room because I hate beige, anything. But I'll get to that at some point. I want to get my shit situated and then my cave together. Uh, as you can see, it's still kind of a mess. And I can't really see over there, but there's other area back there. Um, trying to use the natural light while I can because I changed all the lighting out and it sucks still. Now it's too bright. Uh, I don't know. I give up. But anyway, I'm going to get into this. Uh, I want to start off with the... Uh, what it could have showed, I guess they call them. Uh, let me back this up here. I'm gonna start off with a CD, and I already forgot where they're from. Good start. Good start, Rob. Um, it don't matter, it's about the CD. Uh, Rich gave me this. I'm gonna get his channel name wrong, so I'm not gonna try it out. Um, it's a band called Hornado. So much for natural light, right? And it's called Super Supersonic Punch. Um, there is nothing special about this album, not at all, but it has that earlier uh, Judas Priest when they were just getting to what you would call metal zone, and I hear a lot of Halford at times in here. Um, I reason I'm putting this on here is because uh, I pick it up a lot and play it, um, so figured it was worth, uh, you know, mention. Hornado, sorry about the light guys. I, Figure that out. Supersonic Punch. Now these next four basically probably would have made my top ten li top ten list if they weren't essentially EPs. Um, first is a, a band out of my home, my, my home state, where, I'm from, where I live currently uh, in Missouri. And, uh, they live, they're down in Springfield, so about two and a half hours away. It's a band called Paralandra. Uh, all, all fall down, right? I'll fall down. Uh, modern hard rock, great female singer, punchy. Got she got a throat. I mean, she can sing. You know, she's got she's got a voice, powerful voice. Uh, a little bit towards the poppy side, but it works. Um, she can rip a guitar too. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, again, it's just a five-song EP. If it would have been, um, definitely would have been in my top ten if it was a full-length release. Uh, next is a band full of kids. I think the oldest one is 18, maybe, I think, or she just turned 19. And it's a whole family of kids, and the band's called Liliac. I've been following these, these guys for probably two or three years now. They've been around for a while. They were mostly known for doing covers. This is their first legit all original EP. Um, it's a little bit expensive for what it was, but I'm supporting the kids, metal kids. And the singer Mel Melody, 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 yeah. Uh, that girl can sing. She can do Dio, she can do Metallica. Uh, she's got that almost virgin on the male kind of voice, but enough to stay female. It's so good. And this is a five song EP, and they all signed it. Highly rec recommend these kids. Uh, Band. I'm not gonna say kids because they're they're a damn good band. Chain of Fools is the name of the EP. I'm gonna try to remember to link all this stuff. Next is a band that was also originally from my area. They were from Kansas, uh, Topeka, Kansas originally. I think it was. Which was, no, actually, I think they're from Kansas City originally. But anyway, they're, when they started ripping the music out, they won the battle of bands in Kansas City. They opened for a couple of big bands in. Uh, Chiefs Stadium, Arrowhead Stadium here, which is the Chiefs, go Chiefs. 
Um, and they're a, base, a Christian based uh, band, and there's a male and female singer, and they're married. How cool is that? She has that Amy, uh, Amy Lee kind of voice from Evanescence. He's got that gruff, um, I, I don't know how to put it. He can sing nice, you know, but he, then he can get into that dirty voice and a little bit of that death metal, death metal growl in there. Um, he's a pastor. They moved from here to Tennessee, I think it was, and then they moved up to like South Dakota or somewhere to start his own, his own uh, congregation, whatever you call it. I'm, I'm not good with that stuff. But the band's called Bayless. And the album's called it's Ready Aim Fire. Ready Aim 3. This is actually their third release. And this is an EP. Six song EP. Uh, and I'm telling it's got a bad running. It's gray on like, or it's white on like light gray. And I'm telling you now, if this album, if this was a full album, this would battle for a one, two, three spot. This is so good. If you like that bit of symphonic, bit of. Not five finger death punch, but in that in that in that range, um, it's Christian based, but you can still like it. Good music, it's good music. Um, I, give it a try. I'm going to post the links for that. I'm definitely going to post them. I'll make sure I do that this time because a lot of this stuff is kind of small stuff that I love. And then lastly, I mean, what's a video without Witherfall showing up? Uh, again, this probably had a battle for the top spot if it wasn't for. Uh, it's a seven song EP, numbered uh, 2000. Uh, it's got a cover of Won't Back Down by Tom Petty, and it's really dark, it's really good. Uh, but it's got a, like a, a bonus track, a bonus, uh, I think it's a bonus track from their first album that was a Japanese release only, stuff like that. But another great EP album from these guys. I love this band. Uh, I, I'm definitely a fanboy of these guys, and they're super nice guys. I mean, especially the singer Joseph Michael. He he is super nice. He is really interactive with fans. He's super interactive with me. I mean, the guy sent me uh, one of their clear vinyl out of a hundred. He tracked me down to find me to send it to me. I mean, how it doesn't get any fucking cooler than that? All right, guys. Now we're going to get into the uh, actual CDs. <sighs> Too much talking. Of course, I. All right, we're gonna get into this one. This is a band out of Chicago, if I remember correctly. Uh, they changed singer, singers on this album, which I really like the original singer Danny a lot. I mean, like their first album was like 2016, 17. I love that album, uh, and they changed singer, singers, and I thought it was gonna be. You know, you know how that goes. It's actually a really good CD. It's a little bit darker for them, um, which surprised me with the, with her voice because she's a little more on the um, softer side versus Danny. Because Danny could go sound like phrasing like corn and growl and sing high, but she does a killer job as well. And it's Cold Kingdom. Another one in a small band. It's called Into a Black Sky, right? Into a Black Sky. And this is another one of those. It is a full CD. It's just on one of those shit cases. Um, it's 11 songs. This is one of those things that this album really grew on me. I started playing this more and more as the year went along. And this came out beginning of the year. But I really, really enjoyed this CD. Next is another band. This band is out of UK. And that case is all cracked. It's probably from moving shit. Uh, out of the UK, it's got terrible artwork here because it's dark and dark. Uh, out of the UK, I've been following them for a few years since their first EP. They have two EPs, and this is their first full length album. Uh, they got signed by Pavement Records, which is not always a good thing. Their new songs on here are good, but the ones they redid from their EPs on here are not. You can tell uh, somebody got a hold of them and wanted them to be something they're not. Now, that being said, it's still a killer, killer album. Uh, Sacred Heart is in your face, good rock and roll, good, good rock, good hard rock in your face song. Sorry about the crack on there. 
But the artwork is so dark, and it's on a dark background, so it's not going to show up very well. And it's called Fragments. And this came out in the early part of the year as well. Uh, fantastic. Uh, the, the way I found them is by a song called For the Love of Hate. It's about addiction, alcohol, drugs, um, any mental, whatever you want to put into it, but it's such a fantastic song. And I hate that they, in my opinion, they destroyed this song considering the original one. The original one had that early 80s, you know, haunting vibe to it, like hair metal-ish. And they, they really toned it down here. But that being said, the album overall is obviously one of my favorites of the year. This, actually, this my CDs are kind of light musically this year. Uh, my vinyl is going to be a heavier top, whatever I decide to do. I've still got to figure that one out. Uh, next is a band called The Defiance. Uh, this is their second album. Uh, this one really surprised me. Their first one's really good, but I think this one's better. It's, it's called like a weird name. It's a Kusho, so Kosho, uh, as you can tell, has Japanese influence. But it features Paul Lane. Uh, Tony Bruno and I can't uh, Gene Mar Mar Marcello. Um, uh, they were later on. Well, uh, Bruno Ravo's original Danger Danger uh, bass player. Paul Lane came in later. Uh, I don't like Paul Lane with Danger Danger for some reason. I don't know why. And then uh, Gene Gene Mar Marcello Marcello, however you want to say it, he joined Danger Danger in the later years too. Um, so that's that. It's very AOR-ish, very uh, Danger Danger-like, but even maybe a little bit softer throughout. But it's a killer, killer album, some great songs on here. Uh, again, I will remember to put links to these bands. Because, I mean, all this stuff I would highly recommend to most of you. I know some of you don't like certain music, but that's okay. Uh, next is a really, really, I mean, I like this original solo album, and I like them in uh, Balance of Power, uh, there's other bands he's been in, but he's got a great voice, uh, and this album really surprised me how good this is. Actually, one of the songs on here is probably one of the songs of the year for me. Limitless, I think it is. I love that song. But it's Lance King, and it's called Reprogrammed, or Reprogrammed? Reprogrammed. It's a concept album, and I do like concept albums. Uh, this is like the uh, collector's edition. I got a bunch of stuff with it, and it's got a different cover, and but it's a fantastic progressive metal album. Uh, not hardcore Danger Danger, uh, Danger Danger, Dream Theater progressive, but it has progressive elements with the hard rock element. Very balance of power in a way, but modernized. Does that make sense? So, uh, Lance King, reprogram. And you can get these directly from him. I mean, that's where I got it from. All right, next is another one, I, I would say shocker, because it's so good to me. Uh, it kind of, it starts off kicking ass and it does fade off song-wise as you get to the end. But what I think they did is they essentially just tried to create an album between, uh, Queensryche, I'm sorry, uh, an album between uh, Jeff Tate, um, between Empire and Promised Land. This is, this is what I would throw this into. It sounds like it's right in the middle of that. And it's on Frontiers, so Frontiers does a lot of, uh, they get studio musicians, and then they throw a big singer in there like Jeff T. Um, and that's what they did here, but it's fantastic. And there's another CD coming up that's done the same thing. Uh, it's, called, it's called Sweet Oblivion with featuring Jeff T. I mean, either call it Jeff Tate or call it, I mean, I don't like that, but it's self-titled, that's what the title is as well. And uh, True Color, Sweet Oblivion, and Behind Your Eyes, Hideaway. The first four songs are, I mean, it's Queensryche. It sounds like they're trying to be, you know, that era Queensryche. Um, another CD I highly recommend. I'm surprised it's not showing up on a lot of uh, top lists. Fantastic album. Uh, it's not a concept album, but it almost has that feel. As far as I know, it's not. I don't think it is. But it has that feel to it. Everything Jeff Tate does seems to. I don't know what number that was, to be honest with you. That was five, because I'm down to the top four. All right, next is another band I, I love as well. As well. All, I mean, all the bands I love. Uh, and it's called, it's Banshees, The Madness. Uh, now this is a, 
I really like this album. It has a lot to do with uh, mental health. Uh, it's, it's all about mental health. So it kind of hits home with me. And I, I really do... It, it's hard because I like the topic of this, but Mindslave is such a fantastic... Mindslave is a perfect album, in my opinion. Um, it's, one, yeah, it's a 10 out of 10 album. This is probably a 9... Point two. I mean, it's got one song I don't care for, and I don't remember. I think it's Into the Breakdown. I can't remember which one it is. But uh, Demons, um, Metamorphosis is killer. Ingrid, I love that song. Dead Inside, and, uh, yeah, Dead Inside. It's cool, and it's, it's like in three acts. But it's Banshee, The Madness. Any Banshee is good. The pre-Banshee. The last two albums, they've had a, a singer, George Call, when they changed over from Tommy Lee Flood. But both eras of Banshee are kick-ass. And actually, this is another band that is originally from Kansas City. Uh, the early band started here in Kansas City. And these next three are they're kind of like 1A, one, you know, 1, 1A, one 1B. One uh, this is another one that I love this album since I got it. Uh, uh, Scott Waters, or it's from it's one of his bands on his label, and it's a band called Veil of Deception. A dis dissonant, dissident voices. Um, I, they're hard to classify. I mean, I see power metal. There's touches of thrash in there. His voice is very unique. Uh, I think that's what catches me the most. It's, you know, there's times where it's a little bit off. It doesn't sound right to me. But for somehow why in my head it works listening to it. When you listen to it, you don't catch it. If you sit down and critique it, yeah, there's things that are a little off, but it in no way kills the vibe of the album. It's killer. Obviously, it's number three on my list. Uh, Veil of Deception. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you classify him as. It's the, the voice is not thrash. A power. I mean, his voice really isn't power metal. It's it. Again, I'll link it. It's just a fantastic album. Number three on my list, so that tells you all you need to know. Uh, I can't wait to hear more for these guys. I hope this gets put on vinyl. I really do, because it's such a good album. I think this is their third release. I think the one's EP. I can't remember. I already got two. I need the other one. So I think it is three. But, uh, Real Deception. And it looks very, you know, like, death metal-ish. It's really not. It's... I mean, if I walked by that, I would almost not pick it up because of the way the name looks. That looks kind of death, death metal and, and black metal-ish to me, but it's not. It's, it's a really, really, it's a really killer album. It's a genre jumper, so you can't categorize these guys in my opinion. All right, we're getting down to the last two. Uh, this one came out just, a, uh, I think, in... Is it January? I think in December or late November. And I, I must, when I first got this, I swear I played this 10 times straight. It's called Love Killers featuring uh, Tony Harnell of TNT fame. Um, another one of those Frontier albums where they put a band, yeah, just throw a studio band together and they throw a vocalist in here. And again, it works. Every song, in, this is a 10 out of 10 album for me. It's very AOR, it's very, a very TNT, again, if I'm putting it in an era, it's between um, intuition and realized fantasy. Uh, it's fantastic. His, I mean, he's up there. He's got to be my age or older. And his, he can still sing. Uh, what's the song? Heavily Broken is a cover song, but it, 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 it's a pop song originally, which I don't care for anyway, so it's, it's killer. Uh, what is it? Hurricane is a single. Set me every set me free is a great like bowdy song. Um, just a killer, 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 killer album. Number two of mine. So that tells you. And again, very AOR, very uh, mid era TNT on that softer side of hair metal. But it it, it sounds like it's from the '80s, so I love it. Whole lot of red, which I'm not a fan of red. All right, for a 20 minute video, uh, now, I know most of you aren't gonna notice, you're gonna be like, what the fuck, but I don't care, because I love this CD. 
Uh, I almost want to put this in my vinyl because I love it that much. And again, it's another band. It's a modern band from, this is the brand, obviously 2019. Uh, they've been around since 2014-15. They're out of New York. Um, you can find them on Bandcamp, shit like that. Um, I forget how I found them. But uh, I've been getting their shit every, every year that it comes out or every other year that it comes out. And each album has gotten better. And this is just a fantastic album. Uh, as you can hear in the background, this is what I've been playing. And this is the best song on it. It's kind of ballady. It's called Angel. Um, but it's a mid-tempo, hair metal, AOR-ish. Uh, nope. Yeah, there's a little bit of keyboard in there and stuff like that. But the band's called Station. And it's called Stained Glass. I just, I mean, I love this album. And again, the song's called Angel. That's one of my songs of the year. <clears throat> um, just a fantastic album that I highly re recommend to anybody. If you're just a rock fan, pop fan, hair metal fan, I mean, I mean, even you fucking thrash and death guys, I know you listen to some soft shit too. Don't, don't be talking shit. It's, it's a very well put together band. They sound like they're out of the 80s. And I always love that. With better production, obviously. But all their stuff has been self-released. I mean, look, that looks like it's something out of the 80s. I can't see. Looks like James and Brie, doesn't it? But uh, just a killer, 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 killer album. I mean, this one, this one, this one, this one, <laughs> this one. Yeah, I'm going to put the Lance King up there, too. Highly, highly, highly recommend. I mean, Defiance, all this shit is good shit. I will link everything and put a, a video link so you can hear them. Uh, where you go from there is up to you as I break my classes. Um, but there's my top 10 CDs of the year for 2019. Uh, I got an update to do and then I'm, gonna, I'm working on my, my vinyl. I got a lot of vinyls, so it's hard to break it down. I don't want to do a top 30 again. I kind of want to narrow it down, but I'm having a lot of trouble. Um, there is so much this year that came out that I, I didn't even get close to what I wanted. So I'm going to be missing a lot of things I think would have made that list. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. You can't buy everything all the time. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys for watching. And little by little, you'll see um, what I'm doing here. Uh, redoing everything and figuring out lights, which I hate that shit. Cause it's not, the production shit is not me. I just want to get up there and I kind of miss my... Uh, my dining room. <laughs> Just put it on the table and go. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and we'll catch up real soon. Have a good day.